Welcome back to Ben Rants. And when I was a kid, action movies actually had action in them. Stupid director DVD action movies. Root John Claude Van Damme's career, will you? Well, you can burn in hell! Anyway, I hope you folks appreciate what I go through to satisfy people. It's not easy being a ranter, because some of the things that make me angry, make me angry for a reason. And there are times when I can't satisfy everybody that watches my rants. Well, I'm all for satisfying people, so I'm going to rant yet again on Adventure Time. I agree that I really didn't give this show a proper chance, and that I needed to watch more episodes to get a feel of the show. Well, I did. And it didn't change a dang thing. It did, however, give me more material to work with. So, get ready to be making voodoo dolls of me. Here is my rant on Adventure Time. So, once again, this show is about a boy who wears a white hat and a green backpack for no reason, named Finn, and his best friend, a shape-shifting dog named Jake. These two are adventurers who seek adventure in this weird little world where candy can talk, vampires are emos, and princesses are made of bubblegum and lumpy... stuff. Of course, this doesn't sound like a show I would like from doing my research on it, and I'm right. You know why? Because I don't like cartoons that make me feel like I'm snorting drugs that I bought from a snake guy on the corner of the street where Jerry's Bait Shop is at. However, there are times when I'm actually in the mood for weird stuff. Yep, remember all those mind screws that would appear in some of the movies we watched as a kid? I ate those scenes up. I love them. So, being in the mood for a hilarious cartoon is the wrong mood for this show. I need to get into the right mood. A mood where I'm looking forward to weird stuff. So, I watched a crap load of episodes of this show, and I'm pumped up for surrealism. Let's see if this show satisfies my hunger for stoner's eye candy. One episode I watched was Slumber Party Panic. In this episode, Finn and Starfire, I'm sorry, I mean Princess Bubblegum, bring flesh-eating candy zombies to life. Why? Because the animators wanted an excuse to have flesh-eating candy zombies in their cartoon. Anyway, Hendon Walsh, I mean Princess Bubblegum, orders Finn to strike the candy people because if they get afraid, they explode. Yes, candy can explode. That would explain why my Halloween candy was always covered in ash. Anyway, Finn throws a slumber party to distract the candies. As he's trying his best to keep the combustible candy safe, he tells Jake why he is acting so weird, breaking the royal promise. Giant gumball machines come from out of nowhere, and Finn must answer a math question, which is 2 plus 2. Of course, he gets it right, and the giant gumball machines turn all the zombie candies into real living candies. Finn then picks up an old cake guy and hugs him. He then proceeds to fart. <laughs> That's not funny. Anyway, this episode was... I honestly got nothing. I wasn't entertained, but I wasn't wanting to jam my head into a log splitter either. So, I just don't know what to say. Let's move on, shall we? The next episode was Trouble in Lumpy Space. In this one, Lumpy Space Princess, the one that sounds like a guy because she's voiced by the show's creator, Pendleton Ward. Anyway, she accidentally bites Jake, and Jake starts to turn into a lumpy thing. So, they have to go to Lumpy Space to find a cure for Jake. While this is going on, they ha stop at Lumpy's house where they ask if they can use her parents' car. This then leads to Lumpy getting into an argument with her parents. Lumpy comes off sounding like a teenage girl. I'm sorry, but with that male voice talking like that, that's kind of creepy. Anyway, they can't use the car, so they have to use Lumpy's friend's car. However, Lumpy finds out a Lumpy prom is going on, and he, I mean she, wants to go to it. Finn and Jake get angry because she is thinking about herself, but then Lumpy goes on a ranting spree. Wow, Lumpy's a witch. 
Anyway, Lumpy takes Jake to the prom, and Finn finds the cure for lumpiness, which is sitting on a sphere of some kind. Finn busts into the prom with the spear, and he gets accidentally bitten, so now he's turning into a lumpy thing. All three of them then go on a nagging spree, which sounded a bit like this. Yeah, isn't that just soothing to the ears? Anyway, Finn and Jake sit on the cure and are back to normal and party at the lumpy prom. Well, this episode sucked! Lumpy was annoying because he, she, acts like a teenage valley girl. The plot was one-dimensional because how many times have we seen an episode of a show where one character is turning into something and they need to find a cure for the character? A lot! And Lumpy was a whining witch. I almost wanted to punch it. Well, this episode sure as heck was making me hate this show. However, I wasn't done punishing myself, so I watched another one. The next episode I watched was Too Young. Finn and a now 13-year-old Blackfire, I mean Princess Bubblegum, are trying to turn Princess Bubblegum back into an 18-year-old. I must have missed it when she turned 13. A little explanation at the beginning for someone new watching this would have been nice. I can't help it if Cartoon Network airs episodes in random order. Anyway, some lemon-headed guy who yells a lot comes and takes over the kingdom because Princess is too young to rule the kingdom now. Princess and Finn try to make him leave, but no matter what they do, he won't leave. I personally would have waited until he fell asleep and would have stabbed him in the jugula, but you can't get away with that on a TV PG rated show. Anyway, Finn and Princess get sent to the dungeon. However, Princess and Finn happen to have the potion to turn Princess back into an adult with them. The last ingredient they need is a piece of one of the candy people. So, they slaughter a peppermint and put one of his remains in the potion. No, that would have been funny, but he just breaks off a So, Princess drinks the potion, but she needs one more ingredient. A hug from Finn. I had no idea ingredients could be physical actions. Anyway, that happens, and then Princess turns back into an adult, and the annoying lemon head leaves. Yay! Anyway, Finn tries to get some from Princess, but she dumps him because she is now too old, and that would just be creepy. Again, I didn't like this episode. The lemon head was getting on my nerves because he sounds like his voice actor is having an aneurysm. Plus, I just can't get into the romance between Finn and the Princess. I just don't care. Anyway, let's move on. The next episode was Thank You. This episode was shown by the point of view of the Snow Golem. The Snow Golem goes through with his daily routine of grocery shopping. However, he runs into some fire dogs and manages to make them run away. He then discovers a little fire pup and adopts it. He takes it home with him and takes care of it. However, the fire pup is a little too much for the snow golem to take care of, so he has to take it back to the fire kingdom. The snow golem goes through a lot of hardship to get the pup back to his home, and he manages to get it there. However, when he goes back to his ice kingdom, the pup comes back with his parents, and the snow golem decides to keep him for good. Aww, that's sweet. Also, Finn and Jake were battling the Ice King during all this, but who the truck cares about that? Wow, I hate to admit it, but I actually liked this episode. The characters were silent, so it let a lot of the animation tell the story. Although the plot was cliched, I liked that plot line, so I'll let it go. Plus, the Ice Golem is actually a really cool character, and the best part? Finn and Jake weren't the main focus! See, that's the problem I have with this show. Finn and Jake are the main characters, and I don't like them. I'll get to that later. Anyway, this was a great episode that I wish more episodes of this show were like. Let's move on to It Came From The Nidosphere. In this one, Finn summons Marceline's dad, even though she said not to. Man, this guy loves not listening to people, doesn't he? Anyway, Marceline's dad steals Marcy's bass guitar, and goes around sucking the souls out of things. Now, Marcy and Finn have to catch Marcy's dad because she wants her base back.
wants her base back. Man, what a selfish, depressed little witch. Well, she is gothic. Anyway, after several unsuccessful attempts, they meet up with Marcy's dad, and Finn plays a song that Marcy recorded about her dad. They then have a moment, but then Finn stabs Marcy's dad, and he's blown back to the bowels of I don't know. Anyway, in the end, Marcy asks what the pocket is doing on Finn's shirt. He says Jake's in it. He opens it up and sees Jake, and Jake proceeds to fart. <laughs> it's still not funny. Well, I hate to say it two times in a row, but I also really like this episode. Despite Marcy and Finn were getting on my nerves, I loved how most of the episode focused on Marcy's dad. I actually enjoyed watching him suck the souls out of things. It's too bad he was sent back to hell. Anyway, why can't this show be about the good characters? If this cartoon was called Adventure Time with Snow Golem and Marceline's Dad, I would definitely watch it more often. Anyway, we now move on to Marceline's Closet. At the start of this one, Finn and Jake make balloon music. Um, am I supposed to find that entertaining? Because I don't. Anyway, Finn and Jake go to Marcy's house, but she's not there. She leaves them a note that says not to go into her house before she gets there. So, what do they do? They go into her house! I'm supposed to like these characters, right? Anyway, Marcy gets home, so Finn and Jake have to hide in her closet. For the longest while, they try waiting for Marcy to do something so they can escape. There's one part of this episode where Finn sees Marcy naked. Peeping sure isn't creepy in any way, isn't it? Eventually, Marcy falls asleep, so Finn and Jake start to creep out, which is ruined when they start talking. Marcy then wakes up and sees them. This leads to an awesome ending where Marcy sends the boys to the Dark Realm and they get ripped to shreds by Winged Demon Seraphs and they gobble their organs up like a horse on apples. No, that would have been the cool ending. However, Marcy just says, whatever, and goes back to sleep. What?! They freaking were in your house when you told them not to go! And you don't care?! Even Einstein couldn't explain how much sense that doesn't make. Of course, you may say, that was a joke, you idiot. You know what? I might have actually laughed if the boys actually went through a lot of humorous things, but the most that happened to them was Jake got bit by a spider. A spider! A spider! Anyway, this episode was really a step down compared to the last two. Finn and Jake came up looking like morons who don't know how to follow a simple instruction for a plot about trying not to get caught. There were so many missed opportunities on how it could have played out. And the ending was just nothing but a big cop-out. Phew, thank goodness. I was afraid I was starting to like this show. Anyway, let's keep moving on because I still have four more to go through. Next up is Ricardio the Heart Guy. <laughs> Get it? Ricardio. Because he's a heart. Cardio. Which means heart. Ricardio. Heart. Anyway, it starts off with the Ice King kidnapping Princess Bubblegum. Finn and Jake are able to get the princess away from the king and replaces her with Jake's butt, which the king kisses. Okay, folks, let me make this perfectly clear. Butts aren't funny. They're just a body part. There is no comedy in them. You can't just have a butt appear out of nowhere and expect to get a laugh out of it. It just doesn't work like that. Okay, especially guy butts. They're not funny. Heck, I don't even like looking at them. So why are there guys my age who like looking at guy butts and laughing at them? That makes no sense! ...from the same guys who go around accusing other guys of being gay. Anyway, they say princess and a talking heart comes and swoons her. Of course, Finn gets jealous and starts to suspect that Ricardio is up to something. Guess what? He was right. Anyway, it turns out Ricardio is wanting to rip out the princess's heart so he can marry it. I so wish his plan was accomplished. 
Anyway, unless you didn't see it coming at all, Ricardio is the Ice King's heart, and the Ice King gets his heart and puts it back into him. You well, this was another bad episode. This plot has been done to death with a character getting jealous of another character that turns out being evil. And there is one huge plot hole of this whole show. If Jake can shapeshift to giant sizes and the Ice King gives the boy so much trouble, why can't Jake just turn into a giant and just get rid of him? It'll be so easy. Huh? What the heck is the end? You see? My gosh, it's not my job to make this show for the animators. Thank goodness. If I was involved with this show, I would hang myself with barbed wire. Anyway, next up was business time. Finn and Jake were burning clumps of ice with flamethrowers. They have flamethrowers now? While they do this, they find businessmen that want to be ordered around. So, Finn and Jake make businessmen do everything for them. As you can imagine, Finn and Jake get really fat and lazy. What happened to the flamethrowers? The businessmen then start to suck up fluffy things, and then Finn and Jake fire them. The businessmen then go on a frenzy. Finn and Jake then hire them again and order them to leave. The end. Another bad episode. Another bad episode. Finn and Jake came off looking like sloths for a majority of it, and the businessmen were bland characters who all were good for just doing what they were told. And I swear, we've again seen a plot like this. Moving on, we have my two favorite people. In this one, Jake starts to spend a lot of time with his girlfriend, who's a Japanese-speaking rainicorn. I would say how messed up this relationship is, but I like a relationship between a dragon and a unicorn, so I'll let this slide. Anyway, Finn gets jealous again, and Jake decides to go hang out with both of them. However, Finn starts to love hanging out with Queen Rainicorn, and Jake gets jealous. What is this? A drugged up version of Shakespeare's Othello? And so, Jake cheats on Finn with the boy named Tiffany. This then leads to an epic anti-climax where Jake and Finn apologize and make up. Seriously, what the truck happened to those flamethrowers? Well, this episode was also bad. The plot is not only cliched, but this show already did a plot similar to it. There was a huge missed opportunity to actually have a struggle between Finn and Jake. And do I really need to mention the unfunny running gag where the translator made Princess Rainicorn sound like an old man? We finally, finally move on to the last episode I watched, Memories of Boom Boom Mountain. In this one, Finn and Jake meet a crying mountain who wants a roughhousing between mar marauders to stop. They try several different things that don't work, until the end, everybody in the village needs Finn and Jake's help. Finn then finds a way to fix all their problems. Well, that was a rush solution to a rush conflict. Again, I hated this episode. I just couldn't get into the mountain character, the conflict didn't lead to any humorous situations, and the ending was rushed quicker than a Little Caesar's pizza. And with that, I am done. There, 12 episodes of Adventure Time. I think that's a good enough handful to give a good, solid opinion on this show. And guess what? I STILL freaking HATE IT! The characters of Finn and Jake are very bland because they have absolutely no character to them. All they do is go on adventures, and that's it. That's not a personality. That's a hobby. Also, the animation is just pitiful. The characters move around like boiled pieces of spaghetti. I've seen seven-year-olds draw better than this. Now, I know what you're thinking. Ben, you're an idiot. How dare you have an opinion about the animation when you can't even draw yourself? Yeah, because it makes sense to compare me to professional animators. Let me repeat that. Professional animators. These people have degrees in art, and this is the best they can do? I'm sorry. That's just sad. And plus, I'm still learning how to draw. Of course, I'm going to have to learn to draw if I want to be an animator, and my style is going to look nothing like this. That's our thing. People like to use the excuse that it's an animator's style. Really? In that case, how about my drawings from long ago? That was my style. Granted, they suck, but that was my style back then. That's okay, right? No. Even I'm not going easy on myself. 
So, I'm not going to go easy on people who actually have more experience than me. And finally, this show was really underwhelming. I really was expecting a lot more from this show, seeing as how lots of people like it. However, there are just several opportunities that this show never takes advantage of. It never goes the extra mile. In the episodes I watched, I was waiting for something epic to happen, but when it reached its apex, I was like, that's it? I just felt like the show could have gone further. I mean, this show has a TV PG rating for crying out loud. Why? This show isn't even that edgy. I've seen TV Y rated shows that take more risks than this. And finally, a majority of the episodes are cliches. Granted, cliches are everywhere in animation, but this show tries nothing new at all. The only thing that makes it unique is it makes you feel stoned while you're watching it. Sorry, that doesn't make it new. So, bottom line, I hate Adventure Time. However, I'm not going to say it's a bad show. I'm just going to say I don't like it. There are several people that like this show, and I can see why. However, I don't. It's just not my thing. I like this, and this, but not this. I don't know how clear I can make this. I gave this show a fair chance, and I didn't like it, so I'll move on with my life. It's not the end of the world if I don't like one cartoon. Anyway, I'm Ben, and I'm signing out. I'm going to go check my vital signs.